Hello everyone, it's day four and it's um, another one of my reflections before I go to bed. Today we spent two hours, me too, today we spent time in um, El Dorado Park and in Clip Town where we went to go worship, uh, where we went to go worship and do two service projects with um, some of the youth and the township and also spent some time talking to some of the young people uh, there. And it's it was another eye-opening experience. And I'm going to share some of the pictures or post some of the pictures if I haven't posted them already on our visit there. Which, when I could tell you, it was absolutely amazing. It was absolutely amazing. And I'm not going to say this is ironic. I'm just going to assume that it was divine intervention that Pastor Joe, who was at, who preached at church, L-O-M, oh, Aleem, I know I'm probably not pronouncing it right, preached from Jeremiah 29 and 11, and Pastor Sauls, who was at Jira Ministries, also preached from Jeremiah 29 and 11, and Sonoya, who's sitting with me here tonight, she's not throwing her self into the video she had <clears throat> one of her relatives who is in ministry preach from the same passage today or it's the same scripture and so i just wanted to take time to read it because i wanted it's an inspirational uh scripture and and um it can impart something on your life I feel, but also um, it's good. I think it's it, it's a good passage just to reflect on. And basically, uh, the scripture says, "For I know the plans I have for you," declares the Lord, "plans to prosper you and not to harm, plans to give you hope in a future." So that's the inspiration, right? And that's what we all, especially as Christians. Um, go to church for. We go to church because one, we believe in the Lord. Sorry about that. Two, we believe in the gospel. And three, it's where we find our hope. It's where we find our peace. It's where we find our joy. And at the same time, it becomes a safe place. So <coughs> today, um, and talking with some of the young people, we talked about how do we reconcile the Christian faith when, one, it has been used to oppress, it's been used to hold people captive, and it also has been liberating. It's been a faith that we have adopted, made our own, developed it into something cultural <coughs> that's very specific to us while still following kind of the principle. I shouldn't even say kind of. While still following the principles of the Bible. And, and the only reason why I think it's such a big deal to talk about and that we need to have open, honest conversations is walking, when I say, again, please visit the Apartheid Museum. It is an absolute must. <clears throat> so when you, um, when you think of how the Dutch came into the land, occupied it, dispossessed the people of it, pretty much put them in the exile and forced them to settle elsewhere, or in some cases allowed them to return, but they had to work on land that was once theirs. Many of much of that under the guise of 
Christianity. How do you balance your emotions and your faith with that when you know that faith was used as a tool to oppress as well as a tool to hold one or to hold groups in captivity. <clears throat> and even how do you reconcile within yourself? And this is just a self-talk kind of thing. Um, how do you reconcile within yourself um, your faith? And even if you are, um, your faith is Christian, how do you reconcile the Bible, the practices, and the principles that you hold dear to you <coughs> and that you profess when those same practices and principles were used to institutionalize inequality, to institutionalize racism, to institutionalize discrimination. I mean, it's a reckoning, right? That you wonder is, and I'm just thinking out loud, where does Christianity stand on racism and discrimination? Where do we stand? What are Christians called to do around race and discrimination? <clears throat> Sitting in worship today was <clears throat> utterly amazing. When I say utterly amazing, it's, it was utterly amazing. And um, I hope you guys see the post that we actually um, participated in dance and listen not only to good preaching, but also experience the love, the joy, um, the peace of assembling together in worship, but also just assembling together. <clears throat> and when I think of Christianity, and I'm just thinking as a child growing up, and even just growing up in the United States, knowing the history, how it's played a role in slavery, but also how it played a role in the Jim Crow era, and also how it's played a role in the civil rights movement. It's been liberating because people go to church for many things. People are Christians for many reasons. I mean, for one, I, I just know for myself, it's a faith that speaks to me. It's a faith that I connect with. And as one of the youth um, had said today, it's a, intrinsically a part of nature to want to be connected to a higher power beyond yourself and to know that that higher power exists, whether it's in the form of Christianity or whether it's in the form of something else and we're all searching for a certain level of hope uh, a, a certain level that faith puts in us by helping us to build the resiliency to cope with life for us to have the futuristic outlook ahead of having a better life because I think that's what most people go to church for and go to church because they love the Lord. They love God. And um, again, it's just been difficult sitting here just talking about just religion at large and basically just, like I said, talking about the Christian faith. And what is what are Christians called to do? I mean, what are they called to do in the time of <coughs> Trump 
in a time where racism is starting to really show its ugly head. And what is the church willing to lead on? What is our, if you're a Christian, what is the Christian faith willing to lead on? <clears throat> is the Christian faith willing to fight for reparations, which would be the ultimate reconciliation for slavery for black people in um, the United States? But if not that, what else? Um, is our Christian faith going to charge us to address the number of um, black lives that are lost um, almost every other week or every other month to unjustly? Um, how is the Christian faith going to work on helping us to build a better and safe, just society for all? And how, as a Christian faith, do we atone for injustices for in the past? Or do we not atone for it? Do we focus on what we can do better in the future. So these are just all questions being asked and, and that's because we're here in South Africa and majority of the country is Christian. And even within the United States, the majority of the country is Christian. And so um, understanding Christianity and also understanding faith it's really important in understanding what their role is in advancing racial equity. So I'm going to end it with that. So that's my reflections for this evening.